Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IIT Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a point cloud to a digital surface model. We're going to use a point cloud dataset from the Netherlands, from the AHN3 dataset. And we're going to use the LAST Tools plugin in QGIS to read those data and to um, convert that to a digital surface model. We're going to use the Terrain Shader plugin to calculate some shades. And we're going to add open data uh, for the Netherlands aerial photographs to drape it over the digital surface model to see the result. And we use the QGIS 3D viewer to visualize the results. So first we're going to download the point cloud dataset from the AHN3 dataset. You can find this on the PDOC dataset portal. It's a dataset that covers the whole of the Netherlands. And if we go to download and we click a bit on, we can choose a tile for which we want the point cloud. And I'm going to download that for Rotterdam. So that's the tile. And then I can download it in the LAZ format. That's a compressed LAS point cloud file. And I can read those files using the LAS tools. And there's a plugin. And before we can use the plugin, we have to download the LAS tools. We can install the plugin from the plugin manager. which also says that you first have to download uh, the files from the last tools. And you find it then in your toolbox, but you need to configure. You go to providers and you find last tools and you make sure that it points to the folder where you've saved the last tools software. The first thing that we're going to do is to uh, check the file. I'm going to use last info. I point to the file that I've downloaded. It's a huge file. So this will also, all these processing tasks will take a bit. For the video, I've speed up. And here you see the results, all the information about this point cloud file. And I can also visualize it using last view uses the visualization tool from last tools and when I run it it will launch that interface there it is in reality uh, this is also much slower because this is the full tile which has uh, many many points uh, this is 10 times uh, the normal speed and it loads the point cloud for Rotterdam And this visualization tool has some uh, options. We can uh, navigate a bit through it to see the points. And it has also some filters. So I can choose, for example, to only uh, render the ground surface. That's what we see here. In the same way, I can say to only render the buildings. So now we're going to split the data set because um, it's licensed software and there are limitations to one and a half million points. So we're going to use the last split tool to split into tiles of one million points. Normally that takes a bit, but I've cut it a bit for this video. So now it has generated many different tiles of one million points for each tile. And the next step is to make a raster out of that using the last to them pro tool, which can convert all the tiles in a folder to uh, DEMs. So the cell size, I'll put it on uh, 0 0.5 because that's also the reported cell size that the authorities use with uh, AHN3. 50 centimeter resolution. You can see we can choose here all kinds of other settings, but I keep the default. I use the 64-bit executable. 
I'm going to copy this uh, generated split files to a folder so we can do in batch the whole folder. We have an extension .las. And that should be okay. And then write it to a DM folder. Normally that also takes a lot of time, but here I've speeded up a bit for the video. I'm going to set the project to the projection uh, of the Netherlands. The DMs don't have the projection with them yet, but if I uh, drag them from the browser to the map canvas, it will take the projection of the project. There it loads. And from the layers panel, I can see them now. And I'm going to build a virtual raster to merge all these tiles into one layer. Select them all, there are 404 tiles. I don't want them as bands, so I uncheck that box. And I save it to a virtual file. That's uh, a bit more efficient in space because uh, it will not generate one big TIFF file, for example. So run it. And it's done. So I can now remove the other layers that we don't need anymore because the virtual layer will be one big uh, image which contains all the other tiles. So while it's loading, I'm going to open also the OpenStreetMap to see if it's really in the right position. And we can see that is the case, especially if we look at the river. So now I'm going to render it as a hillshade to look at the result. There it is. I'm going to set the projection. And I'm going to zoom in. And there it is, we can even see the ripples on the river. That's the center of Rotterdam. Zoom in a bit more and then you can see some uh, artifacts and we can smooth it a bit by changing some of the resampling settings. There's a nice plugin to get more uh, natural shades and it's not in the standard repository but we can download it from uh, GitHub, it's the Terrain Shading plugin. And there it is, I can simply download it as a zip file. And then in QGIS, I can install it from a zip file. After installing the plugin, I find the terrain shading plugin in the processing toolbox. I'm going to use this shadow depth function. I load the elevation model. I keep the defaults for now and I choose an output file. I'll save it in this case as a TIFF file. Let's call it terrain shade and I run it. And there it is. You can already see that it creates a lot of uh, shades. And uh, there's nice styles uh, developed by the same developer as the tool, which you can find in the style uh, library in a repository. So you can download it also here from uh, GitHub. Set the projection. And I can load the style files from the layer properties. There it is, I used a 0 to 50. And let's try the others also. So this is quite uh, dominant in shade. If we want more subtle ones, we can load one of the other ones. We see a more subtle one. Or 
or this one. Let's have a closer look at this one in 3D. So I open a new 3D viewer. And in the 3D viewer, I need to point to the digital elevation model, raster layer, that's the DSM. And I can change some of these parameters to get a higher uh, resolution. I have to play a bit with these values to uh, get a good performance and a good resolution. And it's of course quite challenging for your uh, CPU and your memory. But then you can see that uh, it will render after a while and you can uh, navigate through it and you can see the building so this is a dsm rendered from the point cloud and it's the center of rotterdam and we see the shade projected on top of uh, the dm and there's a nice plugin the pdoc plugin where we can uh, download open data from the Netherlands and I want an aerial photograph. Now there's a little bug. Well, I can install it, but I need to restart QGIS and then I can use the functionality. That's only in this combination for some reason. So I use the actual aerial photograph and add it here. And then it will also render in the 3D view. So here we see the center of Rotterdam, but now in the RGB aerial photograph. And now just going to show for fun some parts of Rotterdam. So here's the library and we see the cube buildings and the marked hall. We see the old harbor and the Willemsbrug the Meuse River. Northern Island. And then we continue our route from the Willemsbrug to the Erasmus Bridge, following the Maas Boulevard and the Boompjes. And we make a turn to cross the bridge to the Kop van Zuid. Here it uh, didn't finish rendering yet, so we have less detail. It will come in a bit. Here we go back in the other direction. We see the floating pavilion and the floating forest. And we go back to the north side of the city. Show some other parts. This is the museum park with the Museum Boymans van Beuningen. And the hospital, fly over the hospital. And here we have some other views of the center. And this is the main shopping area. The World Trade Center and the Koopgoot.